Y'all, I recorded a whole video already, but this, I forgot to turn on the, okay, first of all, I didn't know how to turn on the microphone, so here we are, back at it again, and I'm going to go over an example of parallel in a series circuit, and then once I'm done with this one, I'm going to record a video on series in a parallel circuit. All right, so I went ahead and pulled this example off of Physics Aviary. It's not one of the ones on your homework. Sorry, not sorry. Um, and I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to do this, okay? So just like our normal circuits that we've been dealing with, both series and parallel, your first step is going to be to find the total resistance, okay? See my step one from earlier. So um, since this is technically a series circuit, we're going to do R1 plus, and okay, this is where it actually gets a little bit different <laughs> already, right? <laughs> we're not even a whole step in, and it's already different. Okay, so I'm going to call this RE, and for you criticizers of handwriting, I will go ahead and make that a little more... It's, you know, it's not going to get more apparent. I apologize, but get over it. <laughs> I miss you all so much. Um, and the reason I'm putting RE is because we're going to treat this parallel portion of the circuit like it's actually in series, okay? So because this is a parallel within a series circuit, these two circuits that are in parallel actually have an equivalent resistance and that's why I'm using RE here okay so what we're going to do to calculate the total resistance well you know the equivalent resistance is we're just going to solve for it like we would <clears throat> the total resistance of a parallel circuit okay so R1 we know is 670 ohms but we still don't know what our equi what our equivalent resistance is so I'm going to do 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 which is 1 over 300 ohms plus 1 over 590 ohms all right so um, what we talked about before was that whenever you're finding the common denominator of these god-awful denominators, you multiply them, okay? And I don't even have to use a calculator because I already know, not because I'm god or anything, but believe what you want. <laughs> Ugh, I miss you all so much. Who do I banter with? No one, okay? I know this because I already did it once. And the common denominator is 177,000. You can check, but I'm right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if you divide your 177,000 by your 300, that gives you 590 because we literally just multiplied them, right? Um, yeah. So these should be whole numbers um, and they end up just being each other because we only use two numbers to multiply with. All right, so then I add these together. I get 890 over 177,000. I have to flip because that is the commandment. So I end up doing 177,000 divided by 890. And my equivalent resistance ends up being 198.876. I'm going to round to 0.88, but do what you want, ohms. So then I plug that number into my original total resistance equation. I add those puppies together, plus 670. And I get 868 point, let's go 88 again. All right, so that is my total resistance. 
And that was step one. Yay! All right. So then step two, per use, is to find your total current, which if you use your handy dandy triangle, you know that that is V divided by your total resistance. My voltage is 12 volts. And I'm dividing that by 868.88. And that gives me 0 0.0138 amps. Okay. So that was my total current. Now the next step here is what's a little bit different. Okay. Because we're not just dealing with simple circuits anymore. We're dealing with slightly more complicated circuits. So the rules are still the same, but they're slightly different. <laughs> okay. So what I know about a series circuit so in a series circuit, your current is constant. Okay. And your voltage drops across each resistor. I know y'all probably forgot that. If not, amazing, but you know, it's okay. It's been like two or three weeks. I'll forgive you, okay? And for a parallel circuit, your current is different. Okay, remember, your current flows the most across the path of least resistance and less across paths with more resistance. And your voltage is actually constant. So in that sense, those parallel and series portions are a little bit different, but they still operate by the same rules. Now, since this is a um, parallel within a series circuit, you notice how I used the term equivalent resistance back up here. So if you think about it, since this parallel portion is technically in series, the total current across this parallel portion is still constant. So whatever your current is in resistor 1 will be your total current across resistors 2 and 3. And your voltage is going to drop across resistor 1 so you're going to have to calculate your voltage for resistor 1, like the voltage drop across it, and then subtract whatever that drop is from 12 to find the constant voltage that's flowing across both resistors 2 and 3. If that made no sense, don't worry, baby birds. I will feed you, <laughs> okay? Um, so I'm going to start out with resistor 1. I know my current is going to be my total current, which was 0 0.0138. And now I can solve for my voltage, my voltage drop anyway. So that is V is equal to I times R, specifically R1. So I do 0 0.0138 times 670 and I'm getting 9.253 volts okay so what this tells me is now I'm going to figure out the voltage for resistor 2 as well as resistor 3 I'm going to subtract 12 minus 9.253 Okay. And that is giving me 
2.747. And remember, we said that in a parallel circuit, your voltage is constant. Okay, so it's the same across resistors 1 and 2. I'm sorry, 2 and 3. All right. So then the next thing I need to do is solve for the current across resistor 2. You can also do this for resistor 3, but it's really not necessary because they're, in my case, they're asking for resistor 2. But if you wanted to check your work and make sure that both of your currents for resistors 2 and 3 add up 2.0138, that would be a good way to check your work. Okay. So since I have voltage and resistance, I can do current is equal to V divided by R. So I'm going to do 2.747 divided by 300. And I end up getting my current is 0.00915. And that is in amps. But last but not least, they wanted power. And the power across resistor 2 is going to be equal to I times V. So I'm going to do 0 0.00915. I guess I could round that to 6. Sorry. And I'm going to multiply that by 2.747. And I am thus far getting 0 0.025, okay? And since I already did this earlier to check my work, let's see if I'm still right. Uh-oh, I just exposed myself, being confused. Okay, and you can see they got that their power is 0 0.0251. So you can see... I was close. <laughs> okay. Or no, sorry. I was, I was right. I was looking at my current. So yeah, that is your power in watts. And I hope that helped. And I will be doing another video in just a